Shooting video with auto exposure poses some serious problems. Fundamentally, unlike a still image where every frame stands alone, in video, changes to the camera's settings present as a change to the recorded image that becomes much more obvious as it changes over time. Now, never mind that on top of that, the transitions themselves have to happen in a way that doesn't harm the overall look and feel of the video. Consequently, the vast majority of video shot tends to be shot in manual or with manual exposure control. Now that said, the EOS R5C and Canon Cinema EOS OS as a whole does have some mechanisms built into it to support shooting video with auto exposure control. What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. Now, we didn't look at auto exposure and video on the EOS R5 because, well, it's really not any different than it is in photo mode. You've got the standard aperture priority, shutter priority, and program auto exposure modes. You know, the normal stuff that you're used to if you're a photographer. However, the R5C and its Cinema EOS OS doesn't work that way at all. Instead of having distinct auto exposure modes that you put the camera into, there are specific menu settings that can enable auto exposure operations, as well as some auto exposure on demand functions. Now, specifically, these menu settings are the auto iris or iris mode found on the camera setup one page and the ISO gain mode found on the camera setup two page. Now, the other auto exposure option that I mentioned is an on-demand auto iris function, which by default is the function of button number five or the auto iris button. So let's take a look at these features in a bit more detail and let's start by looking at auto ISO. Now, if you're new to the ISO system on the R5C, I previously published a video on it, which you can find linked in the description below and I'll put a card to it as well. Now, Auto ISO is enabled through the Camera Setup 2 menu page via the ISO Gain Mode entry. Set this to automatic and the camera will adjust the ISO based on the camera's metered settings or metered readings. Now, the upper end of the ISO range that Auto ISO can be configured to use is done through the Limit Auto Mode entry at the bottom of the same page. Select this setting and then choose the maximum ISO you want the camera to select as needed. Now, for more details on both the lower limit and the auto ISO ranges as a whole, see the linked video in the description on ISOs on the R5C as in general. Auto ISO response time is controlled by the AE response setting, and we'll come back to this after we look at auto iris. Now, the other option for auto exposure on the R5C is the auto iris setting. And the reason I'm talking about the second is that this is much more limited in how it works than the auto ISO option on the camera, as it only works with certain sin or certain lenses, which include all of the current RF lenses, except the RF 600 F11 and RF 800 F11, since those lenses have fixed apertures that can't be changed at all, as well as a handful of specific EF and EFS lenses, as well as several Canon cinema servo lenses. Now, I will put all the lenses that are supported to specific lenses, so not the RF ones, up as a list that you can peruse as needed. Now, one thing to note, the cinema servo lenses must be the EF mount versions, and they must be on, of course, an EF to ESR mount adapter for them to work. Now, hopefully it goes without saying that when auto iris is enabled, the camera will automatically adjust the iris or aperture to compensate for changes in exposure. Now, aside from enabling or disabling auto iris, there aren't any other options available for configuring it. So those are the two auto exposure modes, but they're not the camera's only auto exposure feature. Uh, the final auto exposure capability is a one-shot auto iris button function. Now by default, this function is programmed on button number five, or the one that's labeled auto iris, or the auto exposure lock button, if like me, you're used to what the buttons are called from, uh, are named on the EOS R5 in the photo cameras. It's all the same button. This button isn't a toggle or a mode, it's a one-shot action. Press it and the camera will adjust the iris setting to reach the standard exposure. 
Now on top of that, this works with any lens that you can have the, where the camera has control over the iris. So not just a handful of lenses that work with the normal auto iris setting, but basically all EF lenses will work to some extent as well. Now both the button and the function itself can be reprogrammed through the assignable buttons menu. So if you want to either move the function to another button or use the button for another function, you can change that if you need to. Now that brings me to tuning the rate at which both auto ISO and the iris change when exposures changes. This is controlled through the auto exposure response or AE response setting on the camera setup menu page three. Now you'll have three options here to choose from high, normal, and low. Now, of course, the real question is, what do these levels actually translate to? Obviously, high will be faster than low, so is there some kind of thing that we can correlate this with? So to find out, I ran a handful of tests to see if I could determine what the camera was doing when these functions were being used. So I started by looking at auto ISO, but I actually looked at auto iris and even the one shot iris mode as well. But auto ISO was the easiest to test and it is certainly the most broadly usable since it doesn't require specific lenses. Now for this test, I varied a scene's exposure by changing the lighting over a four and two thirds, four and three stop range and repeated this for each of the settings, high, normal, and low. I then looked at how the auto exposure system responded to the affected changes to see what was happening in that whole process. Now, while the data is somewhat limited, I only did a handful of tests, there's some error in all of this information. All of the auto exposure operations, including the auto iris button function, were affected by changes to the auto exposure response setting. Moreover, it appears that the camera uses a, I guess you could call it linear time response for the auto exposure changes with the auto exposure response simply controlling essentially the slope of the response curve, basically how quickly the camera responds. What this means is that in the, the larger the change in exposure, the longer the camera will take to compensate for a specific auto exposure response setting. So if it's only two stops, that change will happen faster than if it's four stops, assuming you don't change the auto exposure response. So that takes care of the auto exposure modes and settings. But of course, anybody who's used auto exposure on their camera knows that that's not the end of the story. While the camera will adjust settings, it doesn't inherently know what those settings should be adjusted to. It simply assumes that the scene averages out to a standard exposure. In most cases, this is going to be 12 or 18% reflectivity. But this also means that if you're working in an extremely bright or dark scene, then you will need to be able to compensate for the differences between what the camera assumes the scene's levels are or reflectivities are and what the scene's really reflectivity or real reflectivities are. And this is another place where the Cinema EOS OS's roots really do show through. Since manual shooting is the dominant way of working with the Cinema EOS OS, and while it does include in support for exposure compensation, compared to a photo camera, it is dramatically less efficient to work with. To start with, exposure compensation can only be adjusted using direct button functions or through the camera's menus. Of course, since this isn't the normal way the cinema camera is going to be used, none of the camera's button functions are programmed to uh, expose up or expose down by default. So you'll need to set these up pre uh, before you can use them. To do this, you'll need to head over to the assignable buttons menu and find a pair of buttons that you want to dedicate to the task. Then you'll need to program these buttons to AE shift plus and AE shift minus from the list of button functions. Now, unfortunately, if like me, you're used to being able to dial in exposure compensation, you know, like with an actual dial, uh, then you're out of luck here. Exposure compensation is not available as a dial function at all on the R5C. Uh, however, you can change the white balance mode by dial function, which is a little weird to me. As for the menus, the auto exposure shift menu setting is found on the camera setup page three menu page, right above the AE response setting.
When you're using the buttons or the menu entries, the auto exposure shifts are made in quarter stop increments over a range of plus or minus two stops. So that's the basics for auto exposure on the EOS R5C. Now, while I'd love to blame all of the limitations and clunkiness on the Cinema EOS OS, and that being the way that the industry normally operates, uh, the reality is video itself imposes a lot of limitations on auto exposure and creates a lot of issues with it. Changing shutter speeds, especially to very fast ones, especially at reasonably low frame rates, has a significant impact on how smooth the resulting video will appear. Changing the aperture changes depth of field, and of course changing the ISO will change the noise levels in the video itself. And while none of this poses any huge or insurmountable problem, or in fact, any real problem in photography, since you can make adjustments to every in in image as it is, those changes all pose significant visible problems in video where each frame is just a small part of a much larger whole. So in short, while I've covered the basics here of what you need to know to use auto exposure in your video, I really don't suggest using any of it. Shoot manual. So with that said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already. Finally, if you'd like to directly support this channel and more content like this in the future, consider hitting the thanks button. It's always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.